Oh, hey. Hello. Welcome. Uh, today we're going to be going over our tackle box because tomorrow we're going to go do some fishing. We want to make sure that everything's here that we could possibly need. Um, this is Anakin. He is the actual master fisherman. My job is just to make sure that he has everything he needs. Um, so usually we ha we take out two full tackle boxes full of different um, lures and uh, hooks, hooks and baits, and um, we try a little bit of everything. We try to fish for different types of fish. Um, we're currently here in Arizona, so uh, you never know what you're gonna catch out here. Um, so we have top water baits that float on the top part of the water. Um, this one right here. Uh, let's see. We got some, some really neat little crankbaits. And Anakin was even even um, he was trying to make his own lures. They're made out of wood, and he painted them himself. So um, all he had to, has to do is put like a little hooks on hooks the, in the back and a little what are those little um, I don't know, like this like here or like another hook. Oh, something to hold the line in the front. And oh then, yeah, and this is line. It holds the it's like the string of the the pole. Yep. Yeah. And you just you just plug them up on top of the water until and see if the fish if the uh, the fish like them. So those were that's his little inventions my, my that little he made. Project. Yeah. yeah. And he's got a ton of little uh, other lures that kind of once they're wet they look like little bugs and little fish in the water. Um, that was the one time he caught a couple bass in those. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got a couple little flies that he likes to use now that tr they're stocking trout. See? A little swivel. These are pretty neat. And let's see. You use a lot of these, uh... This is uh, one of our favorite. It's the heavy salted uh, tournament series from Bass Pro Shops, and it's the uh, pumpkin pumpkin seed color. You want to show them one of these? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. And it has the little tail, little little tail that when it's when when, when it's in the water, it's uh it's just spinning. Yeah, it attracts the fish. Yep. Yep. And then we have Wells putting our tools out there. We have our little knife and uh, our little pliers so we can get in there and try to get the hooks out of the... Some fish have teeth, so you got to be careful. So we have the little pliers. And we also have this, these little... Um, this is also a good tool to get the, the, um, the hooks out of their mouths. Let's see. We have a lot of... Uh, we even went on eBay and bought some some pretty neat uh, vintage lures. Um, there's somebody who was selling some lures that were pretty. That he said were, they were pretty old, like they used back in the in the 80s and 70s. This was uh, probably from the 90s, an old Rapella lure. Looks like it's still in great shape. Um, let's see, there's another one in here. Oh, this one. This is an older one. You can tell that the, the fish is like a super hard plastic. Um, pretty neat. And, uh, he's got this big one that he was, he caught a bass on this one time. Mm-hmm. And this floats on top, right, Anik? Yeah, it floats on top. Yeah, but you just plug it along the top by a uh, little, well, you know if there's little pylons or little um, branches under the water. There's usually big bass hiding down there. Let's see what else. And I actually, was well, this the one that you used the last time that you caught a bunch of fish on? Yeah, I caught a little 
a bunch of those, like, um, it's like the size of my hand. Okay. Mm -hmm, I caught a lot of those. They tried to eat it, but they couldn't swallow it because they were, like, really small. But we still caught a lot of fish that day. Yeah, he was so good that we actually bought, like, a jumbo pack of them. Because we lost a couple. Let's see what else we got. Uh, here's another Rapella looking lure. These work great. And just in case lures don't work very well, we also have um, bobbers that uh, we use with bread and what else do we use? Mm, other bait. Or worms and stuff. Yeah, we use some power bait. Mm -hmm. That's for the trout. Mm hmm gives that like a like a scent yeah to attract the fish that's garlic and this is just plain twist and those are pretty popular when when people around here are fishing for trout mm -hmm. uh, let's see and we have all these these little uh, eagle claw already pre-mates um, eagle claw snails uh, snail hooks and they're already pre-made. You just put them on your, um, put them on your line, and just add a little sinker and a bobber, and you're ready to go. You can use bread. You can use either bread, um, worms, or some of that trout, uh, trout bait. What is that? This is uh, yes, called power bait. Power bait. Berkeley's power bait, and they work great. Um, it's really uh really great for uh, for fishing when you when your lures don't work or or you just you're not being very successful with your lures so we switch them out a lot so while we're fishing we try all types of bait some of them work really well right off the bat and some um, some you have to work with them for a little bit and then just switch them out again and we got I know Anakin has got a bunch of these other um, types of bobbers that he uses. And he, in case he, he catches something, he always has his, uh, his little leader to, uh, to keep the fish in the water. Wait, aren't these called sinkers? Yeah. Yeah, they're called sinkers. Here are some other ones. There are different sizes. We have sinkers for worms too. These are little bullet weights. And you can rig the worm. And then it like, drops the bait into the ground. And you, and you, you just kind of like... Tug on, on it. Tug on it, finesse the worm to make it look real underwater. Make it look like it's swimming. And then you can attract another bigger fish like a bass or a trout. Maybe a catfish. If you're lucky, you can probably get catfish on on something like that. But most likely, you're going to have to use uh, worms or, or some other type of stinky bait if you want to catch catfish. But we always catch a bunch when we go. And we're going to be going out tomorrow morning, so we're just showing you a little bit of uh, all, all the stuff that we carry with us in, when we go fishing, so that we can, uh, we, we're, we try to be as prepared as possible when we're fishing, so we don't, if we have more stuff than we need, it's better, because you never know when you need something, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. When was the last time that you went, went fishing? Um, I think it was like a week ago. Wow. Where'd you go to? Do you remember? Oh, like a mes Mesa. In Mesa? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of nice nice lakes up there. Um, I'm not sure where exactly we're going to go to tomorrow, but it's going to be really early, and we'll, but we'll let you know as soon as we film it, and we'll put, put a part of, part of that video will be attached to this one. All right? So we'll see you in the morning.
So this is a small example of what we normally carry in one of our tackle boxes when we go out fishing. Uh, just so we have a couple of different uh, options uh, depending on what's biting that day. Um, and so we'll, we're probably going to take two other tackle boxes with us. So each one of us can go in different directions and see what we can catch. And if we're lucky, we can probably do a catch and cook. So here we are in Kiwanis Lake. We're about to embark our, on our epic fishing adventure. And here we go. Does it like last forever? Or do you have to take What's your secret trick on fishing in a canal? Well, the biggest trick to fishing in a canal is that when you're casting, you have to hit, try to get as close as you can to the other side of the bank. Preferably, try, if you're using uh, plastic worms, hit the bank and have it bounce back out, back off the bank into the water. And for some reason, that uh, that puts them in the fish into action. And they literally just hit the worm right there, and then you can finesse it back towards the other side. And you keep walking along the the side of the bank and just keep hitting the other side. And eventually, something will uh, something will hit. Usually, just not tonight. Is that a clam? Yeah, I think so. That's weird. <laughs> awesome. 
So it's like a clam. It's like the first thing we caught. A clam. <laughs> Are you filming this? Yeah, it's been filming. We caught a clam. Yeah, that's in crazy. the canal. <laughs> it goes back in the water. I was gonna eat that. No, you can't eat those. <laughs> Show them how to cast. Okay. So. You. To, to cast in the direction that you really want to cast, uh, what you do is you, you open your, your little bale. This is an open face uh, uh, wheel. So then you, you pull it back and you image, you, you look at where you want to go, your line to hit. And then you cast and it usually hits the mark every time. But it takes practice. You got to you gotta keep trying to fish. It takes a lot of practice, so you have to go out there and just continuously visualize where you want the your bait to land, and you just you gotta do it over and over and over again until it lands in the perfect spot where exactly you want it each time. Um, I've seen people cast out in the weeds. And, and hit it exactly where they said they were going to hit it, like 20 yards away. Uh, but that takes a lot of practice, and you get good at at, at casting after. It takes, I would say, it takes about a couple months to really get it down. Some for some people, just a couple weeks. But it's, it's a lot of fun. You just got to get out there and do it. Okay, so we've been fishing at Kiwanis for a couple hours. And we moved over to the back end where there's a canal. Uh, we usually have a little bit of luck there, uh, catching bass and catfish. But today uh, it got dark on us pretty quick, and we don't have most of our light gear with us. So we're probably gonna fish for another maybe an hour or so, and then we're gonna call, wrap it up. We'll probably go out again tomorrow morning.